We're on page 48 on the explain to section about using postulates and segments, or sorry, using postulates about segments and angles. And the big, um, the big new thing here is this linear pair theorem. And all that means is that if we add angles 1 and 2 to create a linear pair, it's going to equal 180 degrees. So when you see linear pair, you should think supplementary angles. So let's go and take a look at the your turn problem here at the bottom of page 48. And we are told that two angles are supplementary angles. If angle one is 45, what is the measure of angle two? So if we know that this is 45 degrees, we want to know what is that? Well, since we know that it's supplementary, it's going to equal 180 degrees, right? So whatever angle one is, angle one plus angle two is going to equal 180 degrees. So if we go ahead and just substitute some uh, information here, 45 degrees plus an unknown angle, right? We don't know what this is, right? Um, we're just going to call it x, uh, equals 180. Well, if we subtract 45 from both sides, you should get x equals 135 degrees. Therefore, we can say that angle 2, right, I'm going to write this and say angle 2, angle 2 equals 135 degrees. Okay, so that's um, an example of the linear pair theorem there. Let's take a look at question number 2. In the, fig in the figure to the right, the two angles form a linear pair again, right? So <coughs> find A, B, D. So we want to know what this is, A, B, D. Right? And we can't just say 9x. we got to know what the angle is. Well, um, this is very similar to the previous problem, right? Uh, 135, that looks familiar. So we know that 9x is going to be uh, equal to 45 degrees. So I guess there's a couple ways you can do this, right? You can either say 9x equals 45, divide both sides by 9, and you get x equals 5, but even that, that's really not the answer that they're looking for, right? They just want to know what the angle is, but we, uh, we already knew that. This is 45 degrees, right? That's the answer. Um, but if they wanted to find x, this is how you do it. <coughs> the other way you could do it is you could do 9x plus uh, 135 equals 180. Subtract 135 from both sides, and, and you'll get to... Um, You'll get to this same part here, right? So uh, you can solve it from there. But anyway, they just wanted the angle, and that was simple, 45 degrees. Okay, question number three. In the figure to the right, the two angles form a linear pair. Okay, so again, this plus this is going to equal 180 degrees. So 5x plus 10 plus 2x minus 5 equals 180 degrees. Find DBC. So we just want to know what this angle is right here. DBC. Okay, let's solve for x, and then we'll plug it back in. Uh, 5x plus 2x is 7x. 10 plus negative 5 gives us positive 5 equals 180. Let's subtract 5 from both sides. You get 7x equals 175, it looks like. Divide both sides by 7. And what do you get here? We get, um, let's see, one, 175 divided by 7. 25 x equals 25 and then we're going to plug it back in here since we know what uh, x is 2 times 25 <coughs> minus 5 50 minus 5 45 so um, angle d b c is equal to 45 degrees all right uh, angle is there, sorry now question number four hf is an angle bisector which means that this is now equal to this so uh, EHG is 68. So this, the whole, the whole thing from here to here is 68 degrees. Um, FHG, so FHG, this thing right here is 9x minus 2. Find the value of x. Well, if we double 9x minus 2, it's going to equal 68 degrees, right? Um, let's get rid of this 2 by dividing this whole thing by 2 first. 9x minus 2 equals 34, since 68 divided by 2 is 34. Uh, we'll add 2 to both sides. 9x equals 36. Divide by 9, x equals 4 is our answer. All right. So there's that. Uh, question number 5. Okay, we have an actual real-life proof here. We've been uh, they, they stated at the beginning of this section that we're going to be covering proofs, and here's the one proof that we're actually going to be doing. Um, two steps have been done for us, and 
And here's the thing about proofs, right? We're just proving how we get from the given to the proof, right? So in this first one, we are given the fact that m angle 1 equals angle 3. And, and here, it's right here, given. That's why we put the reasoning here. The second step here, though, we are not given the reason. We are told angle 2 is equal to angle 2, which might sound like something um, kind of kind of interesting to say. Why would you say that? But um, they're, they're merely trying to set up the rest of the problem here. And this, when they say that something is equal to itself, this is called the reflexive property. Okay, and then uh, in step three here, we are told that angle one plus angle two is gonna equal angle two plus angle three because we are told that angle one and angle three are the same. Angle two and angle two are the same. And so when you combine it, you're adding right, all those uh, you're adding angle 2 to both sides of this original step, right? That's the additional property of equality. And then here we are told that angle, plus, angle 1 plus angle 2 is going to equal angle PTR. So this is going to equal this. And then if I change colors here, angle 3 plus angle 2 is going to equal uh, STQ, right? So um, in both sections, right, what, what's happening is that um, you are... Um, taking two angles and, and putting them together to form a, a, a bigger angle, PTR. So this is going to be the angle addition postulate. <coughs> and then lastly, PTR plus STQ. You're just arriving at that conclusion by saying, uh, instead of uh, saying angle 1 plus angle 2, you're just going to call it PTR and STQ. So that is the substitution property. Okay, question number six. Uh, we have a segment LM, which equals 3x plus 5, MN equals 4x, and then the entire thing equals 11x minus 7. Select all that are true. Well, it looks like we're going to have to solve this before we can actually choose what is true, so therefore, let's do that. 3x plus 5 plus 4x is going to equal 11x minus 7. Uh, let's go ahead and solve this. Let's combine those. 7x plus 5 equals 11x minus 7. We're going to subtract 7x from both sides. We end up with 5 equals 4x plus, or sorry, minus 7. Minus 7. Add 7 to both sides. We end up with, what is that, 12 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4. You get 3 equals x. Okay, so... Uh, so that's all that are true. X does equal 3. That is very true. X does not equal 7. Um, LM equals 14. Hmm, let's see. If we plug in uh, LM, right? LM is 3X plus 5. So if we plug in 3. 3 times 3 plus 5. This is 9 plus 5, which is 14. So LM does equal 14. <coughs> LM does not equal 28. We just uh, established the fact that it's 28. What about LN? Let's see, let me, let me get rid of this real quick because I need space. Um, LN is 11x minus 7, 11 times 3, minus 7, 33, minus 7, uh, 26. Yeah, so this is true. Um, the last one is not if, if that previous one is true. So the first, third, and the fifth choices are your correct choices. All right, question number seven. Let me get rid of this to make some space. Uh, find the value of x using the information find the measure of uv, segment uv. Okay, so we were told these three segments are going to equal this longer 4x minus 29. So let's do that. 13 plus 6 plus 2x minus 18, which is this plus this plus this, is going to equal uh, the bigger 4x minus 29, which I get from right here. So let's combine like terms, this plus this plus this. So that's 19 minus 18, you're going to get 2x plus 1 equals 4x minus 29. Um, let's subtract 2x from both sides. You get 1 equals 2x minus 29. Well, let's add 29 to both sides. You get 30 equals 2x divided by 2. You get um, 15 equals x. Okay, so... So that's part of the answer, 15 equals x. And then they want uv. They just want this segment right here, uv. So 2x minus 18. So instead of x, we're going to put 15 minus 18. 
So this is 30 minus 18. So you're going to end up with 12. So UV equals 12 is your other answer.